Hi, I'm Kim Solas, and I just wanted to react to Yuval Noah Harari's short video about utopia. Um, actually, I completely agree with it in general. You just want to say what utopia, what, what about it? But there is a context here in that I think that question was posed because of our recent activity using utopia as a countermeasure to AGI apocalypse. Um, so let, let me give you the sequence here to, to explain what I'm talking about. Uh, in May, uh, the organization Metaculus, that has a large number of people making predictions about things, suddenly shifted the prediction of when artificial general intelligence will exist from an average of 2057 to 2039. Now that's only 17 years from now. And the, that date will probably come down further. So we're talking about maybe AGI existing within 15 years. So that happened in May. And it was a big change. You, you can look at the graph of that. And it came about because of large language models like uh, Dali. You're probably aware of all the things Dali can do. <laughs> I'll just give you some examples that can create pictures. That This is uh, a disaster in the Canadian Rockies that no one saw. It occurred in the early morning 60% of a large glacier fell off a mountain, right? And so Dolly can give you a picture of that. I'm known for the Banff classification. When I first presented that in 1992, I was heckled by two young women. Of course, there are no pictures of that, but Dolly can give you that. And my father was there too, <laughs> and so on. So all sorts of things you couldn't have in the past, you can now have with um, Dali, my specialty is kidney pathology. The kidney is an internal organ. Why would it be beautiful? It, it wouldn't be, there's no selective pressure for that. But with Dali, you can make very beautiful pictures from things like uh, kidney vibes. So, and these large language models that Dali is just one example of, um, are what influenced that prediction of when AGI was coming. Okay, so that happened in May. On June 5th, Eliezer Yudkowsky, um, out of frustration that no one was paying attention to his pushing this idea of how dangerous AGI is, well, it's going to kill us all off and we're not doing anything about it. So he published this document called AGI Ruin, a list of lethalities. And it has 43 bolded paragraphs with all the various ways that AGI is going to kill off the human race and how terrible it is that we're not doing anything to protect ourselves from this huge danger and so on. So it occurred to me and to computing scientist Rich Sutton, who I checked this idea with, you could use exactly the same argument of, of, of how terrible it's going to be when AGI exists what the AGI apocalypse is going to do to the human race to postulate that AGI could cause a utopia. And you would understand that it is an effective countermeasure. Utopia is not a very cool idea, just de novo in itself, but as a countermeasure to Eliezer Yudkowsky's extremely scary 43 paragraphs of bolded predictions about how we're all going to die soon. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's an effective countermeasure 
to that. And I'm a physician, so I also got interested in the idea of an AGI utopia in medicine and kind of how one would optimize that. And I have a lot of daily contact with medical students. They're interested in that. I'm also in contact with youth poets, <laughs> at-risk poets, uh, young people. And they, they, they are also um, giving me their thoughts about what uh, uh, AGI utopia in general would look like in a medical utopia, and particularly in, in uh, public health. You, you can imagine that the details of what do doctors do might not be heavily impacted by AGI for quite a while, but public health that deals a lot with policy would be very, very soon. You may know that these large language models, one of the things that did is create a new way of, of handling democracy. And then this was proposed to people to see if they preferred this machine generated algorithm for uh, democratic process to uh, human generated ones, and they did. So um, you, you can imagine that's a kind of policy thing so these policies in medicine could be greatly improved potentially by input from machines. And you, you might say, ah, yeah, but it would be just incremental. Yeah. No, <laughs> the other insight that Rich Sutton has brought to the world is when you look at all the big things computers have done, they are never using the way humans do things. Like they have never been characterized by teaching the machine the way humans do it. And then that's really important for the spectacular su success machines have. No, that's not the way. Machines are using a different model of the world. Therefore, the possibility that they could greatly improve things like human cooperation or um, planning to prevent diseases or treat uh, diseases in large uh, populations is quite real. And it wouldn't be just minor or uh, incremental. It could really be a game changer. So that, you see, is the reason we started talking about utopia. It isn't just that, you know, we always had this plan. No, no, it, it is the counter. Um, Eliezer Yudkowsky's uh, very, very scary ideas of what's coming in the next 15 years. Yeah, and um, so that um, I think maybe puts a different spin on it. And um, yeah, I, I, I think probably some of the people listening would be interested then in contributing to our ideas about what this future utopia would look like. And you see, it doesn't matter right? if it's going to actually occur or just our talking about it shifts the needle a little bit toward a more positive future in general. When uh, Yuval Noah Harari talks about incrementally making things better, yeah, we're for that too. And I think it, it's good to focus on the idea of making things better rather than just being passive victims of, <laughs> of a sort of apocalyptic AGI future, right? So I'm with him. I also want people to be thinking about this incrementally making the world better, right? Not just all at once or not feeling frustrated when you can't do it all at once. And, and part of it is a public relations game, but a very high stakes one, right? That, that uh, if indeed everybody buys into Eliezer's idea of what's gonna happen, that include that increases the likelihood that that is what will happen. Whereas if 
people are more taken by this idea of incrementally improving the world and maybe getting to a kind of utopia through those increments eventually, that benefits us. It, it benefits us directly. You know, it's not a matter of whether what we predict is true, but just talking about it makes the future better. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you. And we'd, we'd be happy to have your ideas coming back at us to uh, contribute to this intellectual ferment. Thank you.